I watched this video months back that had a story about a man climbing a mountain. Basically, the story goes like this. So the man's climbing a mountain and a storm happens and it's really hard for him to see. So he clings onto the edge of the mountain for dear life. And a higher voice calls out to him and is like, if you let go of the mountain, you'll be safe. But he's fearful. He doesn't listen to the voice. So he clings onto the mountain all night and he freezes to death. He dies. And in the morning, when the storm clears, it's revealed that there was literal ground right beneath his feet. And if he had just let go of the mountain, he would have been safe. He would have survived. Basically, the moral of the story is that when we cling onto things out of fear, we can end up hurting ourselves in the end. Now, when I heard this story, I applied it to toxic relationships or friendships, which is what I want to focus on in today's video. I'm going to talk about why it's important to stop chasing people or forcing relationships and instead let go of what isn't serving your well-being to make room for what will. As someone who used to have a really bad anxious attachment style, I know what it's like to chase someone. Honestly, I wouldn't even consider what I did chasing. It was more like a never-ending game of tag, except I was always it. Is this girl a track star? I used to be a chaser, okay? I was a track star. I admit it. Here's my medal. I'm not proud of it, but it's there. Yeah. F it. Ever since learning my worth, though, I've retired from the game of chase, and it's been pretty great. I'm gonna give you some tips so that you can stop being a chaser, too, because isn't it exhausting? You're like that one squirrel from Ice Age that keeps chasing after that acorn. I'm not here to judge though because I used to be the same until I started integrating these three solid tips into my life. Let's start with tip number one. Figure out the reason why you're chasing in the first place. As a former chaser, it can be invigorating, especially when that person is just within your grasp. But have you ever stopped to wonder, why do I do this? Because at the end of the day, don't you feel a little or embarrassed even chasing after someone who clearly doesn't want to be caught? For me, I used to have an irrational fear that everyone would end up leaving me at some point in my life, and so I would chase after them, and when they would eventually leave, it kind of confirmed that fear that people would leave, which is so sad, but after doing some self-reflecting and actually getting to the root of the issue, I was able to start healing that inner wound. You can personally do this by journaling, doing therapy, shadow work, meditating, talking to friends or family, or even finding helpful resources online. That was awkward. Okay, anyways. <laughs> Healing your triggers and changing your behavior patterns can be challenging and take time, but once you do, it can be so rewarding. Please be kind to yourself while you're on the journey. Now, I feel surrounded by love, and I understand that clinging to people or holding on to things for too long won't make them love you. Usually it does the opposite because nobody likes to be backed into a corner. People should choose to be with you out of free will, not because you force them. Once you realize the people in your life are there because they choose to be, it makes you so much more grateful for choosing the right people instead of chasing the wrong people. Tip number two, realize they aren't all that and no one is perfect. When you put things or people on a pedestal, you convince yourself that they're unattainable. You tell yourself that they're perfect and they have no flaws and you would do everything in your power just to have them. But you gotta take the shine off them. I'm not saying you need to devalue them, but you need to stop idolizing people at the expense of your own value. And once you take them off that pedestal, it puts things into an entirely new perspective. You're going to see yourself as a prize instead of this person that didn't even want to commit to you. Instead of asking, Why don't they want me back? Or, How can I make them love me? You should be asking yourself, how can you show yourself the love that you've been desperately trying to give this person that clearly isn't willing or ready to receive it? Also, you should ask yourself if they even deserve your love because clearly you're trying to give it to the wrong person. Dating you would be a privilege and if someone doesn't see that, then it's their loss, not yours. If you're the kind of person that struggles showing yourself love, then I would suggest doing self-care activities or practice setting boundaries with people or even going after certain goals that you've put on hold because you've been so focused on this other person. Tip number three, remember that there's someone better out there for you. This will probably be the most difficult tip to follow because even when you do finally realize that this person isn't all that, there may still be days where you ask yourself, what if this is the best I'll ever get? But don't listen to that thought because it's false. It's a scarcity mindset that's trying to set back your progress. I mean, just look at the way that they've been treating you. 
You've been chasing after them like a dog, which is beyond disrespectful to yourself because you deserve way more. Of course you're gonna find better. Honestly, it can't get much worse than the poor treatment you've been receiving already. I'm trying to tell you that you can only upgrade from here. So just remind yourself, if it's not gonna be this person, it's gonna be someone better and let that person leave. I think it's better to be alone than in a relationship where your value isn't even recognized. And I think that it's silly to try and convince someone to be with you anyways. Don't chase after people that don't want you because after a while it gets discouraging and don't let it reflect your worth either. The person that's meant for you will not run away and if they do, they're not gonna be gone for long because what's meant for you will come. It's not gonna do the opposite. Anyone who doesn't see your worth isn't offering you the love and respect you deserve. The person that wants to be with you will make it known and they will see your worth from the start. They will even celebrate your worth. They'll give you certainty and clarity and they won't make you run laps or prove yourself in order to be with them. They won't make you feel confused. Being with them will feel effortless in comparison to feeling exhausted from chasing unreciprocated feelings because you won't have to fight to prove your value. What's meant for you will find its way and it will be with someone who values you and fully makes you feel secure and cherished. In conclusion, I want you to recognize your inherent worth and stop seeking external validation from others. You've just got to consciously put the let them theory in action. In this case, if you have to chase after someone in order to be with them, that is a clear sign to let them go. And if they value you, then they will realize the loss that they had made when you decided to leave them and they will try to make things right with you. Now whether or not you decide to let them come back and give them another chance is your call. And if you're asking me, But Sierra, what if they don't ever come back? That's okay because you're clearing the path for someone way better to come along. Chasing after someone just delays your ideal partner from entering your life and also it just sidetracks your growth. It just hinders it. Moving on from people that make you feel undervalued isn't just about finding someone better. It's about preparing yourself for healthier love and relationships in general. You deserve relationships with people that are fulfilling and mutual, not ones that require relentless pursuit and are one-sided. Love isn't easy, but you're not going to have to chase it. A key part of healthy relationships is mutual respect, effort, and compatibility. So if someone isn't reciprocating your feelings, that's not a reflection of your worth. It just might mean that you guys aren't compatible. So let go of the chase. Don't lose yourself in the process of wanting another person. You are already enough on your own, and once you finally realize that, you'll no longer be a chaser. You'll be retired, and you're going to hang up your medal. Actually, it's, it's not really something to be proud of, so you'll probably hide it somewhere no one would ever find it, like the collection of self-help books that you swore you'd read. But on a serious note, you will be attracting positivity and love effortlessly. So consider retiring from pursuing unrequited love because it's really nice, you guys. Retired chasers don't just know their worth. They attract rewarding relationships that bring peace, not anxiety. And also, supposedly, <laughs> it's going around that they are incredibly sexy. Didn't hear from me. Didn't hear from me. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just spreading the message. They're in sexy, so. It's all the more reason. It's all the more reason to not be a chaser. Embrace your worth and step into a life that is filled with love and that's within your reach. It might seem scary letting go of what's familiar, but I know you can do it. Be brave and hang up those chasing laces. Hide that metal. Besides, isn't it time that you give your heart and your feet a well-deserved rest? I really hope my lash wasn't messed up for that entire video. Did it look wonky? I hope it didn't look wonky. That wasn't the look I was going for. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, prove it by giving it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more of my content, consider subscribing. Leave a comment below because I want to hear your thoughts. Are you planning on retiring soon? Let me know. Talk to you soon.